After Matt Painter got National Player of the Year Zach Eady back, most of the team was set in stone. Purdue only lost one graduate and one transfer. There was a clear need for a backup guard, but aside from that, Painter stayed away from the transfer portal. Purdue brings in one freshman in Miles Colvin and a grad transfer in Lance Jones to accompany their 10 returning scholarship players, the most in the Big Ten. Everyone knows how the season ended for Purdue last season, so this could be the best or worst time to join the program. A lot of eyes are going to be on Purdue this season as they feature one of their most talented rosters in a long time, and this team may have the highest expectations in a long time. There's a possibility of a great success this season if Purdue is able to make a tourney run. Bolden and Jones will both need to be a solid part of that team if that's going to happen. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see why so many Purdue fans are excited to see Miles Colvin play. Lance Jones is a 6'1 combo guard transferring from Southern Illinois. He averaged 13.8 points, 3.1 boards, 2.4 assists, and 1.6 steals a game. Jones was named to the all-defense team in the MVC as well. He's played both the 1 and 2 throughout college, but he tended to be a bit more of a scoring guard. He has been all over the place with his efficiencies during college, and it'll be one of the biggest questions surrounding him heading to Purdue. From freshman year to senior year, he shot 28%, 33.9%, 42.6%, and 29.7% from three. He's been more consistent from two, averaging around 50% for most seasons. Even the free throw percentage has ranged anywhere from 56.8% to 76.4%. He's a confident player though, which leads him to taking and making tough shots. The big reason why his percentages were so low was because he took more deep threes than threes that were near the line, and the shot selection wasn't great. Jones operated primarily off ball last season, taking 194 catch and shoot threes. He shot 29.8% on those. One thing to note is he took more contested than open threes, but he did make a higher percentage of the contested ones. One theory I have is more of the contested ones were not six feet beyond the line, while most of the open ones were. He didn't get to his pull up too often in comparison, only taking 66 total. Jones wasn't efficient in either of these categories, but that doesn't take away that he also hit some very tough shots. Something I noticed on his jumpers is he tends to sway left when jumping, and I think that could be throwing off some of his mechanics. Jones should have better shot selection in Purdue's system, as he won't be tasked with taking a ton of tough shots. With that, the Boilermakers can hope that Jones can get to the 32-33% to range from 3, with potential to creep higher. Although the shooting is the first thing many notice, there's a lot more to Jones' game than just the perimeter shooting. What makes me most excited is Jones is a physical defender that can guard 1s and 2s. Jones was named to the all-defense team for his conference after averaging 1.6 steals a game last year. He had a steal rate of 3.4%, which was 108th highest in college basketball. He's been nationally ranked in steal percentage all four years of college. Jones has a strong build with some longer arms that allow him to poke a ton of balls free on defense. He does a good job of pairing this with screen navigation. Jones isn't the biggest overall, but he still has some decent positional size. He also moves pretty quick. He isn't athletic in terms of rising up for dunks, but he has pretty good functional athleticism that Purdue lacked at the guard position last season. Jones will take some of the backup point guard minutes. He's shown some ability to facilitate the ball, but has not been option number one at Southern Illinois for him the past two seasons. He makes a lot of quick reads, knowing when to hit a popper or roller. This will be important if, if Purdue runs more pick and rolls next season. Even within the normal system, it'll be important for Jones to be able to move the ball. I do think he struggles a bit with making secondary reads as in he tends to force passes that may not be there. Coming out of pick and rolls, Jones is looking to score more than facilitate. He uses his athleticism to get near the rim where he has a decent finisher last season. He loves driving left more than anything, especially baseline. He'll often refuse screens so that he can gain a step on his defender and get into the lane. Jones has a ton of qualities that the Purdue guards lacked in his defense and athleticism. He's a solid combo guard that could prove to be very valuable on the defensive end and some upside to hit some tough shots on offense. Miles Colvin's a 6'5 wing that was ranked number 60 in the 2023 class. He averaged 19.3 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 1.9 assists a game at Heritage Christian High School. Colvin's been getting a ton of buzz around West Lafayette because of his elite athleticism. He's able to make plays on the court that many just physically are incapable of. Colvin's a high flyer that took second in the National High School Dunk Contest. Colvin's an absolute show in transition and it is where he did the best of his work. He hunted for steals at times, which allowed him to be able to convert them into dunks on the other end, exciting the crowd along the way. Colvin can become an elite slasher because of how he can play above the rim. Even in the half court, Colvin showed some ability to use the athleticism to get to shots that were difficult to contest. He was more of a straight line driver to the rim, but he did a great job of converting when getting there. Not the tightest handle, Colvin relied on his first step and athleticism to get into the paint. Once there, he could rise up against basically anyone in his way. This should translate more as being a guy that can attack closeouts well in college. 
Being able to gain and maintain an advantage is big in basketball, and Colvin has proven he can do that. The athleticism has puzzled me a bit defensively. For someone that jumps and moves as well as he does, I think he struggled on ball defensively last season. Some may be because he was tasked with doing everything on offense, though. It seemed at times that he moved really well north-south, but he struggled opening up his hips laterally to stay in front. I think this will be one of the bigger deciders in how much playing time he gets this season. Colvin more than has the tools to become an elite defender. Being in a Purdue system that has been good defensively more often than not should benefit him greatly, both on and off ball. Colvin will be able to afford to be a bit more aggressive on ball, really getting into defenders since Zach Eady will be anchoring at the rim. Colvin did have pretty good instincts off ball, which will be important as Purdue didn't force a ton of turnovers last season. Beyond all the physical capabilities of Colvin, he showed that he can be a tough shot maker. He only shot 31% from three last season, but I do think some of that was because he took a ton of tough shots. Similarly to Jones, Colvin won't be tasked with being the primary creator always. He has a smooth stroke when catching and shooting off ball, something that should be more prevalent for him this season. He's also super comfortable getting to his pull-up and he can rise up pretty much every defender. He has a really quick first step that allows him to get into his motion pretty quick. Colvin has a ton of tools that Purdue needs and there's no question why Colvin is ranked so highly coming into Purdue. Jones and Colvin both have potential to fill some holes that were in Purdue's roster last season. It's funny how they kind of bring similar elements despite being two different players. Both will benefit on offense from being in a Purdue system that consistently generates good shots. Jones has proven he's a good defender, while Colvin has shown he has the tools to be really good on that end. Both players should see solid playing time, and if Purdue ends up making a legitimate tourney run, Colvin and Jones will probably have something to do with it. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'll be having more Team Breakdowns videos coming out over the next few months. Comment below who out of the two you think will be more impactful for Purdue next season.